Good evening and welcome to TD Place for tonight's game between Ottawa Fury FC and FC Edmonton. It is the Canadian Championship quarterfinal leg one between Ottawa Fury FC and FC Edmonton. AJ Jakubek, Graham Ivory with you. And Graham, these two clubs renewing acquaintances for the first time this season, but the 16th time in the last four seasons. And at the end of these next two matches tonight here in Ottawa and next Wednesday at Clark Field in Edmonton, we will know the opponent for Toronto FC in the Canadian Championship semifinals. And we like to think that we know what type of match we get tonight because Ottawa Fury FC and FC Edmonton, whenever they meet, it's always a physical and feisty affair. Usually very close in scoring AJ. And for these two clubs, they both come in having played five matches in their respective leagues. This is the first time that the two clubs have met since Fury FC made the move to USL. And I'm sure that both teams through their opening five matches, not ex not happy with necessarily where they are. The Eddies with just one win and four losses, Fury FC, albeit coming in on a three game unbeaten streak, one win, two draws, two losses inside their opening five fixtures this season. Let's have a look at the starting lineups and they're brought to you by Gabriel Pizza Ottawa's Bigger Better Pizza. And for FC Edmonton, four Canadians in their starting lineup. Uh, you have to have at least three in your starting lineup in this competition. It is Tyson Farrago, the Canadian in goal. They're going with, uh, usually it's a 4-1-4-1 with Sansara at the back. The Englishman along with Northern Ireland under 23 Youth International, Albert Watson, Papdi Akite from Senegal, and then the Guam International, Sean Nicklaw, then Longtime Canadian international Nick Ledger with the captain in that holding role above him. Canadian Ben Fisk, Canadian Alan Zebby, Dean Shields from Northern Ireland, Dustin Correa from the United States, and Englishman Tony Amiobi is up top. And for Ottawa Fury FC, as we are underway at TD Place, they go with 3-4-3, uh, three, three, which is, they have been playing with all season long. Graham Callum Irving, the Canadian international at the back. A back three of Anuo Bassi, the Englishman, Ramon Martin Del Campo, the Mexican, and Shane McElhenney from Northern Ireland. In midfield, it's Andre Campbell, the Jamaican international, Lance Roseboom, the captain out of Iowa, Jamar Dixon, a Canadian international, and Eddie Edward, very familiar to his opponent, having played 79 matches over four seasons with the Eddies. And then uh, up top, Cito, the American, Cape Verdean, Stephen Dos Santos, and Englishman Ryan Williams as we are just through 60 seconds here at TD Place, and it is scoreless. And I think for FC Edmonton fans, Graham, Eddie Edwards an interesting player in the sense that he's played four positions already this season for Ottawa Fury FC. He's played in defense. He's played in midfield he's played up top he's played on the left side he's played on the right side he is their swiss army knife this season yeah eddie edward really you know paul douglas loves these types of players and that's what he talked about when he came into the club last season was looking for players that are versatile just because of the nature of kind of playing division two soccer in north america he's found that in his captain and lance roseboom we saw roseboom last year play three or four different positions seeing eddie edward doing that already this year he's kind of back on the more natural right side for him after playing in that left back role in the 2-2 draw saturday evening in charleston against the battery and of course eddie edward scoring the first ever goal for fury fc in the usl to start the season in that season opening loss 3-2 at the hands of St. Louis FC. Third minute, nil-nil. In case you're uh, unaware of the rules of the Canadian Championship. Two 90-minute affairs. The away goals rule applies, so if it is tied, the team with more away goals will go through. And if it's still tied, then they would go to extra time in Edmonton next week, followed by a penalty shootout 
if that doesn't decide things as FC Edmonton works it into the middle of the park but reading it well as Del Campo who scored his first goal in Fury Colors last week in that 2-2 draw at Charleston the uh, USL East League leaders Graham let's get to our keys to the game yeah key number one AJ simply put battle FC Edmonton play a very physical and direct brand of soccer with a massive back four and a big striker Fury FC will need to win the battles in both penalty areas if they hope to come out on top here in the first leg key number two pressure Ottawa must pressure FC Edmonton when in possession in their own half so not to let them gain pace entering Ottawa's half pressure in the middle is vital own the midfield and control your game and key number three tight in the back you must score to win but with away goals holding as a potential difference maker not conceding at home is crucial it was three away goals last season that helped Fury FC advance to take on the Vancouver Whitecaps into the fifth minute nil nil is FC Edmonton attacks moving left to right with their all white kits Fury with their all red kits moving right to left and they've got possession right now although DeSantos goes down he will win a free kick the referee today is Juan Marquez Lias Arfa Oscar Mitchell Carvalho his assistants and the fourth official is Francis Latulip as Fury push forward on the left just inside the FC Edmonton half it's worked back by Ryan Williams to Obasi the ball and pushing forward is Cito oh good cross and DeSantos just couldn't uh, knock it down as uh, the offside flag was up against uh, Steven DeSantos anyways but uh, glorious opportunity there great through ball though Six minute nil nil. Well, and pace is going to be an important factor for Fury FC going forward tonight, AJ. And they are fortunate in that they have Cape Verdean international Steven DeSantos and his six foot four frame contending with a very big back line for FC Edmonton. Sansara at 6'2. Albert Watson, who we know is rock solid in that back line at six feet tall. Papti Akite. He's 6'4", and Sean Nicklaw at 6 feet. And Diakite, just his second match of the season with FC Edmonton, made his season debut this past weekend in that 2-0 loss at Miami FC. Had to get some visa paperwork sorted out before he could get going with the Eddies this season. In his second season, he was the NASL Young Player of the Year in 2016. Header one by Shane McElhaney for Ottawa. And here comes Jamar Dixon, 45 yards out. On the ball, and he pushes this wide right. Eddie Edward for Dixon. Comes back to Shane McElhaney, and he'll play it all the way back to Callum Irving in the seventh minute, nil-nil. Sorry, go ahead. Just interesting, the uh, contrasting fortunes between these two clubs the last two seasons in the cup in the league for Ottawa Fury FC well you go back to 2014 and it was FC Edmonton winning on that occasion 3-1 on aggregate nil-nil at Keith Harris Stadium Ottawa's temporary home for half of that inaugural campaign as it's headed out for an FC Edmonton throw inside the Ottawa half 3-1 Edmonton won the return leg neither team did particularly well in the league that season the next year it was FC Edmonton who won both legs 3-1 to advance to the semifinals but Ottawa had the great campaign in the league as well a little miscommunication between keeper and defender but it is cleared away Irving and Bill Campo maybe getting their lines crossed there but back to the contrasting fortunes of course after Edmonton won in 2015 it was 
Ottawa who reached the soccer bowl before losing to the New York Cosmos, a dream campaign for them. And then the next year, they finally got through for the first time in three tries as they won 3-0 in Edmonton, lost 2-0 on the return leg, but still went through on aggregate 3-2. Beat Vancouver 2-0 in front of almost 10,000 fans here at TD Place, but lost the return leg at BC Place 3-2. But it was Edmonton who had the terrific season reaching the play- playoffs in the NASL while Ottawa was near the bottom of the table. And it was Indy 11 who ousted FC Edmonton from the championship and that will be their opponent this Saturday that's the match for the Eddies in between the second leg of the Canadian championship and for Fury FC they will remain at TD Place and host Joe Cole and the Tampa Bay Rowdies on Saturday night there's a good run by Campbell Campbell getting to the byline and this is sent out for a goal (laughs) kick but maybe the best chance of the game for either team in the 10th minute uh, Andre Campbell can certainly uh, pose problems down the left side. Yeah, good delivery from Andre Campbell. And, of course, he missed Saturday's game against Charleston, serving the first of a three-match suspension in USL action after a red card offense in the home opener against TFC2, that one ending in a nil-nil draw. Ledgerwood pushing this forward and it's headed back to the keeper, Irving, by Ottawa's Andre Campbell, who was sent off in that last home game the only home game that we've seen in the league this year a nil nil draw against toronto fc2 here's fisk for edmonton works this on the left side korea his shot hit his own man gets it back 20 yards out and could not unleash a shot as back comes Cito on the counter here's Cito plays this over the top Lance Roseboom, the Ottawa captain, and he's knocked down. Referee says play on as FC Edmonton with possession. And here they come with a good run. It's Shields. Challenge from Del Campo, and Shields forced back. And he'll hold it before playing it to the captain, Nick Ledgerwood. Been really impressed with the defensive performance this season from Del Campo and of course you mentioned earlier he scored his first goal as a member of Fury FC a powerful header off of Ryan Williams corner last Saturday in Charleston but for such a young center back just 23 years of age Eddie's in possession now just inside the Ottawa half ball forward for Tony Amiobi, big target man from Newcastle. His brother had the lengthy career there, Shola Amiobi. As Fury win it back, Eddie Edward. And this will be an Ottawa throw, halfway line, 12th minute, nil-nil. And his brother Shola now plays for Knotts County after an impressive run with Newcastle and his other brother, Sammy Amiobi. His right still with Newcastle, but he is currently out on loan with Bolton. Good year for both of those clubs. Bolton promoted to the championship, but they won't see Newcastle there next year. As Newcastle and Brighton already promoted to the English Premier League. Sheffield United going up alongside Bolton. Good year for a lot of the uh, bigger clubs in the smaller leagues. Sheffield United, one of them. Bolton, one of them. Certainly Newcastle, a Premier League stalwart. And even go back to the fourth tier where Portsmouth and Plymouth, a couple of the bigger clubs at that level, in particular Portsmouth, going up to Tier 3 in League 1. 13th minute, nil-nil. Fury with a free kick just inside the FC Edmonton half, and it's taken by Obasi back through the center circle. It goes. Ball forward for Ryan Williams. 
25 yards out, he stops. Curls, trying to feed Cito in the middle, but couldn't get it there. Back come the Eddies. Eddie Edward down on the pitch right now. So play is stopped. As Eddie Edward awaits treatment. Yeah, it looks like he might have rolled his ankle on the play there as he was trying to reach in on Zebby. Well, this marks the 10th edition of Canada Soccer's Canadian Championship, AJ, and as we mentioned, the winner of this preliminary round home and home series between Ottawa and Edmonton will take on Toronto FC in one of the two semifinals. Of course, Vancouver, Montreal meeting in the other, and that semifinal opponent, Toronto FC, currently leading Orlando City 1-0 this evening. Sebastian Giovinco scoring for the Reds. That match just 13 minutes old. Well, Ottawa fans certainly hoping they could get a match with Toronto FC in the semifinals. Again, just under 10,000 here for Vancouver last year. And I guess depends on what happens with the Ottawa Senators and all that, but if you do get the night to yourself and TFC comes to town, there's no doubt it'll be a five-figure crowd. So Toronto FC fans would travel as well, but that's uh, something to worry about after 180 minutes or maybe even more. We're a quarter of an hour in, a long ways to go, and Expecting this to go right to the wire. A lot of familiar faces on this FC Edmonton team. Maybe not as many on the Ottawa team, but still a pretty good rivalry between the two. And Ottawa's played no opponent more than FC Edmonton in their history. Their 16th meeting here this evening. Well, Tommy Amiobi, the man up top for the Eddies, he's featured in 53 NASL contests for FC Edmonton. He's scored twice against Fury FC in the Canadian Championship. Didn't score last year, but scored in both matches in Ottawa and in Edmonton in the 2015 meeting in the Canadian Championship. Of course, that was the year that when Fury FC had the first leg here on the 22nd of April, Oliver scored in just the second minute of the match. And Ottawa was, looked like they were home and free until FC Edmonton netted three goals in the final seven minutes of the match. Fordyce, Lang, and Amiobi, the three goal scorers to give Edmonton the 3-1 lead, and they won by that exact same margin in the second leg. Yeah, that first leg memorable for Lance Lang just terrorizing Ottawa in the last seven minutes as you mentioned scored but he was a factor uh, late in that contest and Fury just couldn't slow him down as the long ball goes out into flex for a corner and this will be the first of the match for either side as we're now into the 18th minute nil nil at TD Place it was Daryl Fordyce who's been the Fury killer in the Canadian Championship. Four goals for the Eddies against Ottawa. No longer with the club, but here's the delivery. A left-footed outswinger that's headed outside the Ottawa penalty area. And Eddie Edward is knocked down from behind, and he's got a word and a little bit more for Sansara. Let's see if some cards are brandished here. Well, you were mentioning earlier about some familiar faces on the Eddies, but maybe not as many with Fury FC. But 
No love lost between these two Canadian rivals as things get heated after Sansara nicked Eddie Edward on the way by. I think the referee wants a word with Edward and Sansara here as he's about to <laughs> well, it's funny. Free kick. It was funny how that happened, and that you know Eddie Edwards playing on the right side for Fury FC, and Sarah on the left, and both players on the opposite side of the pitch when that challenge occurred. Well, when both players going into the books, and it was, I think, no question that Sansara should have picked up a yellow there, but. Fortunately, cooler heads didn't prevail for Eddie Edward, and he'll go into the books as Juan Marquez sets the tone fairly early in this match. Yeah, and you know what? Probably a good idea. Well, no question. Just you know, we were talking about how some things, uh, how, how things have gone between these two clubs. You may recall in 2015, and kind of after FC Edmonton made that remarkable late match comeback to claim the 3-1 win. Things got really hairy after the final whistle during the handshakes that also involved Fury FC head coach at the time, Mark DeSantos. So all in all, yellow cards for Eddie Edward and Natan Sensara. 20th minute, nil nil, and Fury with a free kick taken short. Here they come now, it's Cito. to get this forward but it's cleared away back into the Ottawa half and retreating is Shane McElhaney perhaps one of the most familiar names in this rivalry is the man that's on the touchline for FC Edmonton and head coach Colin Miller been behind the bench with FC Edmonton since they made their NASL debut 22 wins, 24 draws, 28 losses as FC Edmonton's head coach. Eddie's gain control and work it across the back four for Sean Nicklaw. Campbell trying to pressure him and it comes back to Diakite. Over to Albert Watson. Gets this forward, but Zevi can't control it. And Ottawa's got a throw. Lots of Canadian talent on display tonight, AJ. And there's some former Canadian internationals on both benches. But do you know the only person in this building who was part of Canada's one and only run to the World Cup in '86? Colin Miller. There you go. I remember it. <laughs> I was, I was four. I was I'd four. like to remember another, Graham. <laughs> the good news is we might host it before we qualify again, but that's another story. 61 caps in his international career for Colin Miller. It spanned from 1983 through 1997. He's also been interim head coach of the Canadian men's national team for period of time between January 2013 and July 2013. There's Ryan Williams down the right for Ottawa's. They work it back to Rose Boom now. McElhaney halfway line, center circle, Del Campo. 23rd minute, nil-nil. Obasi. 40 yards out. Some good footwork to push forward now to Campbell, but that's sent out for an Ottawa throw. Here's Cito. Now Obasi. Going backwards and all the way back into his own half where Del Campo plays it to the keeper, Callum Irving. It's been a pretty cautious first half of the first half, Graham Ivory. Yeah, no need to take any risks, and I think gives you probably the best chance came off a delivery from 
Andre Campbell that saw the shot go wide of the goal, but defensively, Fury FC have looked very strong since conceding three to start the season against St. Louis FC, and we'll now see if they can find that connection again on the set pieces where they scored both their goals in Charleston on Saturday night. Yeah, Diakite sends it out for a corner. First of the match for Ottawa Fury FC. It'll come from the far corner flag. Williams and Cito both giving this a look. And the referee organizing things in the penalty area. DeSantos parked right. About two yards from goal. It is Cito with the delivery and into the arms of the keeper, Farrago, and he'll quickly launch this into the Ottawa Fury FC half. Headed by Andre Campbell. Now near touchline, McElhaney for Dixon. Crossing the right, Eddie Edward. Jamar Dixon. Campo on the left now to Obasi. Now it's Del Campo. McLean. It's this forward. Edward with a good run down the right now to Ryan Williams and couldn't get the shot away. That's good defending there by Diakite, who's certainly one of the top defenders at this level. Well, he was the NASL's Young Player of the Year in 2016. And Diakite has proven to be a very good match alongside Eddie's captain, Albert Watson. Fury throw in the 26th minute. Nil-nil. First leg of the Canadian Championship. Leg two next Wednesday in Edmonton. Winner taking on Toronto FC. On the 23rd and 31st of this month. And Ottawa wins another throw inside the FC Edmonton half. And it's going to be a long throw from Shane McElhinney. Headed away, but right to Jamar Dixon, 30 yards out. Right of center. Forced back, and he'll play it back to Ramon Martin Del Campo just inside the Ottawa half. Trying to pick out DeSantos. But back come... The Eddies, and here's Tommy Amiobi. Plays it back to the halfway line, and again, the Eddies will build it up from the back deliberately. Nick Law, the ball, and Roseboom got a foot in that. Eddie's in possession just inside their own half. As it comes forward on the right side. Here's Nick Law making a run. Moves this wide right. Fisk for Nick Law with the cross. It's a good ball and headed out for a goal kick. As that was Dustin Correa with the opportunity for FC Edmonton. Both teams with maybe a half chance and that's... Uh, FC Edmonton's best of this first half. Yeah, that was a great delivery from Fisk, and Correa just couldn't get anything behind the ball. It just glanced off his forehead and out for the goal kick. But Correa able to find some space in behind Ottawa's back line. Obasi gives up possession but wins it back as Fury push forward. Obasi gets this ahead, and good run here by Cito, but it was 
Zebby who got his foot in there and knocks it out for an Ottawa corner. They're second of the match and it'll come in the 29th minute. Nil nil. Once again, Ryan Williams and Cito over this, and this time Williams with a better angle with a right footed in swinger, and he delivers, and it's a good ball. Farrago gets a piece of it, but referee calls a free kick FC Edmonton's way. Yeah, Lance Roseboom going up. I'm not sure I want to have another look at it there. I don't think there was really much contact from. Roseboom as it was just Farago lost his footing on the way down In Ottawa's first corner of the match Farago did very well having to go up against Steven DeSantos to claim that one and Farago typically the backup to former TFC goalkeeper Chris Kanopka six foot five American fourth season with FC Edmonton for Tyson Farago Wonder if he's a distant relative of Zen and Kanopka. Well, that's a that's a favored name in these parts, especially in the arena just opposite of our broadcast location, the arena at TD Place, home of the 67s, where Kanopka made a name for himself there. Yeah, certainly one of the more favored players in the last 20 years. Remember the Ottawa 67s and Ottawa Senators. WHL Championship and a Memorial Cup and was in that series against the New York Rangers the last time they squared off and it went seven. Face-off specialist Kanaka. For our radio listeners, it will be game four tomorrow on TSN 1200 as the Senators take on the New York Rangers from Madison Square Garden looking to even that series at two games apiece. Half an hour in. Still nil-nil at TD Place. The biggest Ottawa Senators fan on Ottawa Fury FC has the ball right now. It's Eddie Edward. Ball forward for Ryan Williams. And this is set out for an Ottawa throw. And now a good delivery that's going to force Nick Law to play this out for another Ottawa corner from the near corner flag, which means the likely a delivery from Ryan Williams. Exact angle that he laid one into Ramon Martin Del Campo for a goal in Charleston on Saturday in a 2-2 draw. Curry FC doing very well getting some cr- good deliveries into the box and forcing the Eddies to put it out for corners. Williams with the delivery here, and it's a good punch by Farrago. To get this outside the 18-yard box, and now the Eddies win a throw. Nick Law on the right for FC Edmonton. Runs it forward to Fisk. Correa comes back on the right. Here's Nick Law for Dustin Correa. Albert Watson, longtime captain of this club, although now those honors belong to Nick Ledgerwood. Good run by Shields, he plays it wide left and comes back to Alan Zevi. Wide right, Dustin Correa now back inside the Eddie's half. Here's Diakite. Wide left, Sincera. Good ball, but it's headed clear by Del Campo, and Campbell will send this forward to the halfway line. Flicked on to the near touch line, and that's played by Nick Law. 
Here he get it back, and here's DeSantos, chesting it down just inside his own half. Two white shirts on him, but he lays it off for Roseboom. Cito trying to get a break going, but nothing doing. 34th minute, nil-nil at TD Place. As it comes all the way back to the Ottawa keeper, Callum Irving. Just curious, Graham, who do you think nil-nil would favor? Is it favor? Oh, dangerous challenge there as Cito goes down. And this will be a free kick for Ottawa. I think, Ledger Ledger would, would. I think Ledger would got away with one there if we saw yellow earlier in the match and the late challenge and then another kick out from Led Ledger Wood after he made contact with Cito in the initial challenge. So a Fury free kick and they're playing this back for Obasi. Wide left Campbell. Ahead to Cito. In the middle, quick turn here by Jamar Dixon. 45 yards out. On the right, McElhenney. We'll play this back. And it comes all the way back to Del Campo. Halfway line, Obasi. Back to nil nil it favored Edmonton in the first event between these two first meeting is nil nil here and 3-1 is a uh, good ball that's sent out again for another Ottawa corner yeah another dangerous ball put in the box and you had both DeSantos and Cito there almost in a 2v1 scenario good lob in there from McElhaney and Diakite to clear that into safety so another Ryan Williams corner here in the 36th minute delivery from the near corner flag here's the right footed in swinger and a little too far for Lance Roseboom As this goes out for a throw I mean nil nil in the opening leg really has kind of changed over the years I think in the past it was automatically thought of, okay, well, you're the home side. You go home and you win. But now a scoring draw isn't necessarily a bad thing to have to go through on either. Well, I know heading into Edmonton, if it's nil-nil, Fury FC going to be very pleased with it, at least with how they've played defensively. They know they can play in tight games. We've seen it through their opening five contests this year. And it's just a matter of, are you confident that you can nick one away from home? And with how they've threatened on set pieces, it's a distinct possibility. Here's Cito with the cross inside the six-yard box, just over the head of Ryan Williams. And Ottawa Fury FC getting ever so, so slightly more dangerous here. In a game that hasn't really seen a lot of danger. And there's a bad challenge. And what are we going to see? We're going to see a card. It's going to be yellow. And that is against Dean Shields. And boy, I think there are some members of the Fury staff and players that thought it might be straight red against Shields. Well, it was already, the ball was already released by Ano Obasi, and Shields just goes right up the back of him. And studs were up on the challenge, and we getting a second look at it now, and it was... Well, that was definitely an intent to injure challenge there from Dean Shields. And Shields, the Northern Irish international, 14 caps with his national team. Father currently the manager of Kilmarnock, where Shields has played 35 times. He's also played 90 times with Rangers, and that was back when they had been pushed out of the Scottish Premier League and he helped them get all the way back up He also featured for Hibs 117 matches with them 85 with Doncaster Rovers joined the FC Edmonton 
Coming over from Irish side, Dundalk. So Fury back attacking here, 39th minute, nil-nil. That's, uh, that's going to be a foul against FC Edmonton. Lance Roseboom fouled in a very dangerous spot. Well, you know, it's funny, AJ. We talked about that early booking that we saw with both Sansara and Edward both going into the books early in this match, and you made the point of saying that, look, just trying to set the tone is probably a good idea to do it early in the game, and you can already see the emotions running hot for both these sides. So this is uh, close to a corner. I mean, it's... Seven yards out and on the far touch line, and they'll play it short, but it won't come off. It was read well by FC Edmonton, Cito and Ryan Williams. Always, whether it's free kicks or corners, both of them like to, or they like to set up both of them to keep the other team guessing what might be coming. That time, FC Edmonton read it well. It wasn't a bad idea. I like the game that Cito has had to start for Ottawa. Can Ottawa counter here as ball is won by Obasi. Gets this wide right, Ryan Williams, and it's going to be an Ottawa throw. Well, there's a guy you always feel comfortable in possession of the ball in Ottawa Obasi. Some great foot skills. The futsal player turned pro soccer player. Williams went down edge of the penalty area, but referee says play on. It was two yards beyond that. And now the free kick Edmonton's way right at the halfway line. Five minutes left plus stoppage time here in the first half. Still awaiting our first goal. Zevi plays this wide left for Sensara. Perea. And oh, Fury wins it back. And here they come on the break. It's Cito. Gets this wide right. Edward following up on the play. De Santos was making a run. But Ottawa forced back just inside their own half. Here's McElhenney. 45 yards out. Good ball forward on the right, Ryan Williams. Byline, going to get the cross in, and he will win another Ottawa corner in the 42nd minute. Well, Fury FC continue to win set pieces in this opening half, and we perform well on them this season. And but the one thing has always been for Ottawa, it's just capitalizing on the opportunities given to them by their opponent, and we'll see what type of Delivery Cito can put in. Looks like he's favored with the left on this corner. Far corner flag. Looks like a left footed in swinger from Cito, but Williams there in case they try to pull something different. It is Cito with the delivery, but couldn't get it past the first defender, and it will be an Ottawa throw. It's the last two. Ottawa corners have desired something a little bit better. Now another delivery from Cito and edge of the six yard box. It's grabbed by Farrago with some big Ottawa bodies in the way. Most notably Del Campo. FC Edmonton fans I'm sure will notice 
A lot more size on this Ottawa Fury FC roster compared to last year where that was certainly an issue, especially uh, going forward, having lost the likes of their target man, Tom Heineman, to Tampa Bay, now with the San Francisco Deltas in NASL, alongside his former manager in Ottawa, Mark DeSantos. And it's another DeSantos and Steven DeSantos who's bringing Ottawa that size in attack this season, six foot four, and while he does have one goal this season for Ottawa, it wasn't so much his size as his vision of the game as he scored in Ottawa's 1-0 win over the Richmond Kickers, their third match of the USL season, scoring from half, catching the keeper off his line. Well, we do have an FC Edmonton corner here, near corner flag. It's an outswinger, and Campbell will clear this. As the Eddies try to pierce this final third, but forced into a throw. Campbell goes down, and they're just going to say FC Edmonton throw again. Well, you certainly see a lot of energy in Andre Campbell tonight. Of course, didn't play on the weekend as serving a suspension in USL. Oh, ball over the top for DeSantos for Ottawa, making a run down 20 yards out towards the corner flag. Now he goes to the byline, gets the cross in, but it's cleared away in the middle by Watson. Better one by Ottawa's Anwo Bassi. Just inside the Eddie's half. Now he's forced back, and he'll play it to Del Campo as the fourth official will show us how much time added on there will be here in the first and it'll be a minimum of two minutes of stoppage time. As the Eddies push forward down the right side. Good run here and the cross comes in Here's a left-footed shot, and that deflects over the bar for a corner, but great opportunity for Dean Shields. It was Ben Fisk who made the run, and that's probably the best chance of the match. Well, once again, we see how good Fisk can be on the delivery, and Callum Irving just yeah. getting his left arm to that attempt on goal from Shields. Here's the delivery on the corner, and it's... Goes straight out for a goal kick. Another minute of stoppage time to be played. So goal kick. For the keeper, Callum Irving. Comes back to the Ottawa half. Played forward by Del Campo. He gets it again. Now center circle. Quick turn and Cito trying to charge forward. And the Eddies gain control. Campbell knocks it away from Zebby, and this will be an FC Edmonton throw inside their own half as. We should have the halftime whistle here any second. Nil-nil. We'll hear from Paul Dalgleish at halftime, and there is the halftime whistle. Graham Ivory, your thoughts on the opening 45 minutes. I think Ottawa has to be very pleased with their performance. They certainly threatened. They got the ball into some dangerous areas inside Edmondson's penalty area that forced a lot of set pieces in Ottawa's favor. Now the job and the, the task at hand in the second half is to, to bury those opportunities when they present themselves because that could be the difference maker in this opening leg. Well, 
Well, the best chance coming at the end of the half. I think Ottawa had a little more. So set to go for the second half. So the lineup for FC Edmonton. Now Farrago, the keeper. Sansara, Watson, Diakite, Nick Law. The captain, Nick Ledgerwood. Niasi, Zebi, Shields, Correa. And the lone striker up top, Tommy Amiobi. For Ottawa Fury FC, it's that 3-4-3. Irving, the keeper, Obasi Del Campo, McElhinney at the back, Campbell, Roseboom, Dixon, and Edward in midfield. The strikers are Cito, Dos Santos, and Williams. So underway in the second half. Fury moving left to right with their all red kits as they concede a throw inside their own half, and it's the all white kits with the blue for FC Edmonton moving right to left here. In the second half. It was the pace of Niasi that forced the clearance out for a throw, but surprised to see the substitution right at the start of half. Uh, I'm wondering if Fisk picked up an injury at all in that opening 45 minutes. I thought he looked pretty good, at least going forward for FC Edmonton. Put a couple of good balls in, including that one just on the cusp of half time that saw Dean Shields' shot nick the arm of callum irving and sending it over the bar so it is edmonton working up from the back one thing you notice when you see ottawa play tampa bay this year is they'll play them on saturday when you see them play fc edmonton here today is Fury push forward again right through the middle. It's Lance Roseboom with a good run. And knocked down just outside the area. And Roseboom is livid and going right to the referee with his complaints. And there's still an Edmonton player down in the box. I think that's Diakite. That's about the third time now that Lance Roseboom has seen an opening and made a run forward. This one the best so far as he just really gets by everyone and then Roseboom when he's brought down from behind which in my mind should have been a foul he fell on the back of the leg of Diakite who remained down but is now back up so it's a goal kick FC Edmonton 48th minute nil nil But really, you'd never know these two teams are in different leagues. I mean, it's just like watching them all over again. Well, we've seen similar things in the U.S. Open Cup when USL and NASL teams go head-to-head. -head. You Good ball wide for Campbell. Gets the cross in and just going up the other end. Although it does stay in play. Near corner flag, Eddie Edward. Beat the defender, but good work there from Sensara. They've been going head to head all night. And now it's an Ottawa throw. I think you might see different styles within USL. For example, when we saw Toronto FC2 here, they're a much younger side versus the Ottawa's, the Tampa Bay's, the Charleston's of the world where. You, well, you see a lot of familiar faces from the last few years in NASL as well. There's the affiliation, and then there's the direct reserve sides, AJ. And I think with those reserve sides, you can pretty much know what you're going to get on a regular basis. And that's whatever the parent club, however the parent club plays, that is going to be a system that they want preached throughout their ranks. And I think we did see that, and you are right. Certainly a lot more youthful exuberance in some of the reserve squads. 50th minute, nil-nil. Fury with possession just inside the Eddie's half. Good ball down the right side for Cito. And he will not keep this in play. It will be an FC Edmonton goal kick. And even though we're just 
beyond the opening half of the 2017 version of the Canadian Championship. Looking ahead to 2018, Canada Soccer has confirmed that it plans to expand the Canadian Championship to include the winning teams from both League One Ontario and the Premier League de Soccer du Québec, the PLSQ. So it'll be interesting to see how the setup of this competition evolves in the coming years. And of course, there's been much talk about the CPL coming into effect, and whenever that takes place, you can certainly bet that you'll have all those clubs competing as well. Very win possession here through Cito, and now oh, a great, great ball. ball from De Santos trying to spring Ryan Williams and took a tumble. And I don't think there was anything malicious there, just good defending from Diakite. Zevi is this wide on the right, gets it back before. Delivering for Dustin Correa. The ball for Amiobi. And he turned, comes back to Correa and got the shot off, but flag is up. Yeah, good challenge on that last play by Nick Law to come back on Ryan Williams after a good delivery from. Steven DeSantos. Second half underway at BMO Field in Toronto. Toronto FC 2-1 ahead of Orlando City. Sebastian Giovinco with a pair of goals in the first half. Kaká scoring on the cusp of half time. So the big stars getting it done tonight in Toronto. Who knows, maybe Ottawa Fury fans, they'll get a chance to play Toronto FC for the first time ever in year four of their existence. Of course, they will play Montreal Impact in a friendly match. That's uh, part of the agreement with the impact that they have, which I think has certainly quelled the fears of many that they would stay independent how this has worked. It's helped in giving Ottawa some depth and some players, but they certainly uh, can use the players that they have the way they want. Well, and really the first true loan agreement took place just yesterday as it was announced that Michael Salazar will join the club on loan for at least a few weeks, but is not featuring in the Canadian Championship so that he would be available to the impact should they need him. Mentioning, mentioning uh, Toronto FC, AJ, and so in line with the launch of the new CONCACAF Champions League format, which places the Canadian representative in Phase 2 beginning in March 2018, a special one-match Canadian playoff between last year's winners, TFC, um, and the 2017 winners will be played on the 9th of August in Toronto to determine who will advance. That is, of course, unless Toronto FC claim the Canadian Championship for yet another year, in which case that would change things again. Free kick for FC Edmonton here. We'll have it just inside the Ottawa half, and now they take it quickly. 55th minute, still scoreless. As FC Edmonton happy to, I think, get any kind of result here. And for Ottawa Fury FC, a, a win would be number one, but not giving any away goals would certainly be a close second. Here's Cito, held back by Zebi, and Correa wins possession for the Eddies. 
Now Fury get it back as Roseboom has it center circle. Good ball for Ryan Williams. Gets this wide on the right for Eddie Edward. He's 30 yards out. Edward looking to the middle and just put it a little behind Ryan Williams as it comes back to Jamar Dixon. Dixon now to the right side, Sheen McElhinney. On the right for Eddie Edward. Back into the middle, Lance Roseboom. Lays it off for Williams. You see Edmonton wanting the offside flag to go up. It didn't, and Eddie Edwards going to win Ottawa of a corner here in the 56th minute looking for her first goal. Well, some good passes strung together there on that last bit of movement by Fury FC, but just trying to find that clean line to get a penetrating ball into the box. And yet another corner one for Ottawa here. Near corner flag. Likely sized up by Cito and a left-footed in-swinger, although, yeah, Williams goes away, so it will be a Cito delivery, and so go out for a goal kick. Went off Del Campo. Scored on a set piece, as we mentioned, on the weekend in Charleston. Fury back in action. Saturday afternoon, that'll be a two o'clock start at TD Place as they take on Joe Cole and the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Good turn here by Cito, trying to spring to Santos on the right, but couldn't get it there. And back come the Eddies, ball for Amiobi, but the flag is up for offside. Here's Roseboom, the Ottawa captain for DeSantos, but his ball goes out of touch and we'll have an Eddie's throw as we now enter the 58th minute, nil-nil. Tonight's match marks the 36th straight match and 36th straight start for Lance Roseboom with Fury FC and an, uh, an Iron Man of sorts in the last three years including 2015 season when he was with Paul Dalgleish in Austin he's featured in 69 of his last 70 matches starting 68 of them missing just one to injury and that was in the spring season last year against this Edmonton side Just inside the Ottawa half. Be back by Zebi now to Diakite. Wide right, Nick Law. They get it into the middle. Shields taken off of him by Dixon. Now to Eddie Edward and. The heavy, heavy first touch and back comes Shields to Amiobi inside the Ottawa penalty area. The shot is stopped by Irving and oh, what a save on the rebound as well. What a stop by Calvin wow. Irving. Two great ones including the second one where it looked like the Eddies were going to take the lead. Wow, what consecutive stops by the Canadian International. I have no idea how he stopped that second shot, AJ. The first one he... Kind of parried the shot away across the face of his own goal. But what a miraculous save and great determination from the Fury goalkeeper. As he gets the leg to it. Well, it was Zebby. Unbelievable. Gets the left boot to it. Keep the match knotted at nil-nil. And you can see Alan Zebby still just in shock that he didn't score there. So it remains scoreless. And he's getting stronger as this match progresses. It 
still two hours to go, minimum. As we are about to enter the 61st minute here at TD Place, and Ottawa's won a throw on the far touchline. Well, Edmonton have five shots on the match, three on target, and all three have been full value in forcing some tough saves from Callum Irving. Free kick. Going to FC Edmonton here. comes forward on the left side, Correa trying to pick out big to Tommy Amiobi and oh he runs into Irving and Irving gets right up to show that he's okay as Ottawa's won a free kick here in the 62nd minute Looks like we'll have a sub coming in for FC Edmonton as Jake Keegan comes into the match. Placing Dean Shields. So that's the second sub for FC Edmonton and still awaiting our first from Ottawa Fury FC. Should mention the available subs here momentarily as oh the ball comes to Cito with a left-footed effort and that one this is the target as he gives it a go and maybe the best chance we've seen from Ottawa here in the second half. Yeah, good left-footed effort from Cito. Really, the only option he had is ball took a bit of a hop off the turf and wasn't able to get it under control before he was closed down. So the available subs, we've already seen Jake Keegan and St. Iniasi come on for FC Edmonton. They still have the likes of backup keeper Chris Kanopka. So here's Ryan Williams winning it. 25 yards out, gets the ball on the right side for DeSantos, and he's pointing. Is he pointing? Well, it's a free kick on the edge of the box, but I'm, I'm, kick. Okay, I, I'm not certain why... He wouldn't let advantage get played because the ball made its way in to Steven DeSantos after a powerful run by Ryan Williams, but I, I don't see the need for the quick whistle there as DeSantos was played through. I was wondering why he was pointing pretty much directly to the spot, and I'm thinking that no way they're calling a penalty here. And I think a bit of a quick whistle there from Juan Marquez but a very familiar spot for Ryan Williams almost the precise location from his free kick goal Saturday evening in Charleston so it'll be a little right of center 20 yards out and you're right I mean this is very close to the same spot where normally you'd see a left footer curl one in like Cito but Ryan Williams certainly has the capability of putting it in from here with the right foot as well the spray is down from the referee So here we go, free kick in the 65th minute for Ottawa Fury FC. Will be the right foot of Ryan Williams or the left foot of Cito. Whistle goes. And it will be Ryan Williams, curls this and it 
Hits the top of the wall, comes right to Campbell, trying to play this across. It comes back to him. Now he gets the cross in, turning. The shot is blocked, and it's cleared outside the 18-yard box. So FC Edmonton survives that free kick. As the Eddies look to counter, but well, they're calling a free kick here. FC Edmonton's way as McElhinney looked to have won the ball cleanly. Comes back to the FC Edmonton keeper, Farago. Now and on the right side, Nyasi knocked down. And Fury get it to Jamar Dixon, center circle. Plays this on the right, McElhinney. Now wide right for Eddie Edward. And it comes all the way back to the halfway line as Ottawa slows things down. It's been uh, an interesting tie because just when you get the sense that the momentum might be shifting, the other side comes in. It was FC Edmonton for 10 or 15 minutes that had the better of the opportunities. Now it's Ottawa getting the better of FC Edmonton, but still nil-nil, 67th minute as they win another corner. Fury this time from the far corner flag. Yeah, the set pieces just keep coming for Ottawa. And this could prove to be detrimental for FC Edmonton, but not if Fury FC can't convert on one of the opportunities granted to them. Five players inside the FC Edmonton penalty area as Ryan Williams delivers an in-swinger and that's cleared away. And it deflects off Williams for an FC Edmonton throw. Having a look down at the touchline for Fury FC, saw Tucker Hume going over there and getting himself ready. And looks like we might be seeing him coming into the match. Made his first start as a member of Fury FC on Saturday in Charleston. Steven DeSantos missed the majority of training that week due to the flu. Mentioned earlier, Chris Kanopka, the backup keeper. You got Sabri Katab, Pedro Galvao. Nico DiBiase and Adam Strafe also available as FC Edmonton have used two of their three subs, but for Ottawa Fury FC, they have all three substitutes available on their bench. Their backup keeper, David Palme. We've got Jonathan Barden, Kyle Venter, Tucker Hume, as you mentioned, Jimmy Chamor Sanol, Thomas Mayer Jaguer, and Sergio Menicio as Ottawa makes a run down the left again. It comes into the middle for Roseboom and he just couldn't control it as back come the Eddies. There's a Fury player on the pitch on the far touch line. And the Eddies push forward here on the right. Comes to Correa. Knocked away from him by Dixon. Now Campbell gets it forward. Dixon launching this. Flag stays down here. No free kick either. Is this going to go out for a goal kick? FC Edmonton in the 69th minute, still scoreless. Well, it was Steven DeSantos that was down at half, and then when Campbell's clearance came, he was up and running. Now it looks like Nico DiBiase is getting himself ready on the touchline for the third and final sub for the Eddies. Del Campo goes up strong for that header inside the Ottawa half. And now it's going to be a free kick going FC Edmonton's way. Oh, and a and yellow, a yellow card. card to DeSantos as well. So here is the third and final sub for FC Edmonton as on comes 
Nico DiBiase, and off comes Alan Zebi, who's going to have nightmares about that miss. Well, it's just a terrific save by Callum Irving, the best opportunity of this match. Yeah, and on that chance, like really, if you look at the finish from Zebi, he just had to put it on the net. And it should have been 1 0 for Edmonton, but it was more the work of Callum Irving to make the save than it was an error on the part of Zebi. Free kick taken. It comes inside the Ottawa penalty area, and we do get a shot away here, but easily taken this time by the keeper, Callum Irving. That time a lot easier than the Zebi shot. Final 20 minutes plus stoppage time. Still nil-nil as Curry pushed forward again. Ryan Williams goes down and he wins a free kick. 20 yards out, just right of the uh, edge of the near side of the penalty area. So another dangerous spot here for an Ottawa set piece. Yeah, and some good work again by Ryan Williams. Some nifty footwork made DiBiase trip and then he gets flipped on the heels as he cuts inside. Again, we talk about the set pieces, AJ, and this could be an opportunity for Ottawa to give themselves the win heading into the second leg if they can put away one of these chances. Once again, Ryan Williams and Cito over this. Free kick, just over 20 yards out in between the middle of the park and the near touch line, closer to the near touch line. It will be a left footed delivery from Cito, and this is headed clear, and it will go out for an Ottawa throw. Yeah, Cito just floating one into the box, trying to see if. Someone could get in there for the redirect on the lip of the six. Well defended by the Eddies. And Tucker Hume is kitted up and looks ready to come in. I thought he was fantastic on the weekend in Charleston. His best, well first, his first start as a member of Ottawa Fury FC. He's made numerous appearances off the bench, but certainly his best game as well. So straight swap for the target man Steven DeSantos Tucker Hume the first of three possible subs for Ottawa Fury FC here in the 73rd minute still scoreless long throw here to be attempted by Shane McElhinney from the near touch line it's this inside the 18 yard box and too many white shirts to deal with it and it is cleared back inside the Ottawa half Obasi oh, oh. able to beat two men but just couldn't get that final delivery as it comes back on the right side Eddie Edward Edward with a good ball that's read well by Farrago just outside the six yard box and he'll grab it launch it forward for FC Edmonton and the Eddies win a throw inside the Ottawa half Good delivery from Eddie Edward. You almost need that ball just about two yards more shallow to kind of put it in that danger zone as to getting the keeper to make that decision. Do you stay or do you go? All that said, good read by Farrago to come out and collect that one. As Fury pushed forward again, Cito for Ryan Williams. Now on the right for Eddie Edward, just passing the halfway line. Edward gets this forward. For Jamar Dixon, back to the right, Edward, and just mishit that on the cross. Trying to get it into the middle for maybe Tucker Hume. Really like the game of Jamar Dixon, and this is, what, three, four straight games now. We've seen him play in the midfield, but now in central midfield, and he looks so much more comfortable and so much more confident now that he's been moved inside. Had some nifty touches on the ball tonight as well. Down the left side. It's left here by Sensara. Comes back to Biasi. Now Correa. 
Good ball and right at the edge of the six, it's taken by the keeper Irving as he sends it to the halfway line. Eddie's win it high into the air. Now it comes to the right side, McElhinney, back to the Ottawa keeper, Irving. And it goes out for an Ottawa throw. We played 75 minutes here at TD Place, leg one of the Canadian Championship quarterfinal. Still awaiting our first goal. Leg two next Wednesday at Clark Field in Edmonton. Winner to take on Toronto FC in the semifinals. 25-67, the attendance tonight, which has been uh, typical as uh, Ottawa works it forward. Here's a left-footed drive by Cito and just didn't make good connection. And that'll go out for a goal kick. And a break for FC Edmonton as both teams have missed some glorious opportunities. Well, a very favorable bounce right to the feet of Cito. Takes the deflection. Oh, it's actually purposely redirected, I think, by Tucker Hume into his path, but he didn't hit it cleanly and missed to the right of the goal. 77th minute, nil-nil. Quick note on the crowd in a moment, but here comes Correa with a good round run down the left and a very important challenge there by Ramon Martin Del Campo as he concedes the corner. And a very well-timed challenge from Del Campo in a dangerous area with the tricky Correa. And it will be Correa with the left-footed outswinger from the near corner flag. He delivers and this is headed clear and Campbell's got acres of space for Ottawa. Just three defenders back and he's got three players with him. On the right it comes to Ryan Williams, 15 yards out. Plays it off into the middle, Campbell and he just couldn't get a shot away. And then two white shirts had converged on him as it comes back near the halfway line. You can really feel that something might happen. Again, it was in this tie two years ago. Ottawa was leading 1-0. And we saw three goals in the last 10 minutes, all from FC Edmonton. You get the sense we might see a goal could go either way late in this one. This play has really started to open up. FC Edmonton's used all three of their subs. Ottawa still with two at their disposal. One last note on the crowd, Graham. 25-67, typical of games in this event at the quarterfinal stage. It's typically been that number. Jimmy Shamar Sano getting up and ready on the Fury touchline. Should note that while well, he does carry a Canadian passport, he also has his Haitian passport and is recognized for purposes of this tournament as Haitian because his last international competition came with Haiti at the under 20 side. Even though he's in USL action, recognizes the domestic player as a Canadian. 79th minute, nil nil. And Fury win possession here as Obasi is knocked down and he's got a free kick a little bit left of center and about just inside 40 yards out for Ottawa so substitution number two for Ottawa Fury FC and it will be Jimmy Shamor Sano replacing Cito still with one to use as they get another set piece here exactly 38 yards out in the 80th minute here's Ryan Williams and he gives this a go and that was ambitious certainly he scored some screamers before in his career but uh can't pull it off from that distance here. It would take something 
the absolute upper drawer if he's to pull that off as Fury wins it. It's Roseboom with a shot, and that one misses the target. A little left of the far post. You're right, AJ. You can you just feel something here as the intensity level has really stepped up from both teams, and they really seem to have no issue throwing men forward now, knowing what one goal this late in the match would mean for either side. FC Edmonton lose possession, and here comes Ryan Williams. And he's won another free kick from similar distance. This one maybe about 36 yards out. Hey, look at the set pieces tonight, AJ. And seven corners for Ottawa. And this is probably, what, uh, free kick number 9, 10, maybe 11 uh, from within from within 30 yards. And... Ottawa hoping eventually one of these is going to pay off. Ryan Williams delivering in the 81st minute. And this is going to be clear just inside the 18-yard box. Campbell pushing forward. And I think he's going to get, well, he'll get a foul called on him. So free kick for FC Edmonton. Just inside their own half. And the Eddie's pushing virtually everyone forward here. Right to the edge of the Ottawa penalty areas. Free kick is finally delivered, takes a bounce inside the 18-yard box. Roseboom goes down, and he is fouled, so that'll be a free kick for Ottawa. Just checking the head-of-town scores, at least where the other Canadian team in action tonight is concerned, and that's Toronto FC and MLS action continuing to lead Orlando City 2-1. They've played... 79 minutes at BMO Field. There in front, powered by a pair of first-half markers from Sebastian Giovinco. beyond him and Diakite plays this wide right as DiBiase want to spring Amiobi but step for step with him was Ramon Martin Del Campo was Callum Irving the Ottawa keeper there's no trouble with it now McElhaney on the right side for Eddie Edward head for Big Tucker Hume, first back into his own half, and back come FC Edmonton as Ottawa's able to win a throw. Will we see some late drama again? Certainly saw it two years ago in the first leg. It's, build, it's been building in this one. Bit of a chess match early, but boy, has it really opened up here in the second half. McElhinney with a free kick for Ottawa, trying to pick out Campbell on the far side. And this is going to be a foul against Andre Campbell and the referee calling over the... Uh, Medical staff for FC Edmonton immediately. All right, Sean Nick Law, who went up against Andre Campbell. He 
was just a knock of heads that sent Nicola to the ground. So Nick Law getting some treatment right now. And this is going to give us some more stoppage time here at TD Places. We're into the 86th minute now. Well, the one Canadian who we won't see tonight. We haven't really talked about him very much, and that's because he didn't make the trip with FC Edmonton, and that's former Fury FC midfielder Mauro Ustaku. He's one of three Canadians that is not making the trip with FC Edmonton. Eight Canadians in total in their club. Four appeared in the starting 11 tonight, one on the bench in Canadian international Adam Straith, who has 42 caps with the Canadian men's national team. Same number of Canadians in the club for Ottawa Fury FC with 8-3 in their starting 11 tonight. Two on the bench in David Palme and Thomas Meyer giguer And while Jimmy Shamar Sanon would count himself as one also, he's considered Haitian for purposes of this tournament as that's the last country he held international duties with. And then three Canadians not in the 18 tonight for Ottawa, including Carl Howarth, who continues to work his way back from an ankle injury. Fury pushing this on the left side for Campbell again as Nick Law is off. And now back after receiving treatment. have it just inside the Ottawa half and yeah certainly wish uh, Mauro Iustakiu all the best certainly uh, one of the good guys and the breakthrough year in 2015 under Mark DeSantos things really not never got on track with Paul Dalglish and Mauro Iustakiu and so far waiting for that opportunity again as Fury pushed the pace and here comes Campbell as a man on the left. He lays it off. Chamor Seno. Couple of nice moves. And just couldn't get a shot away. As FC Edmonton pushed this forward again to Amiobi. But Ottawa trying to win it back through Roseboom. Now bounces for Ryan Williams. This ball will go out for an FC Edmonton throw just at the corner flag. Eighty-ninth minute, nil-nil. Ball goes into the air, Dixon. And it comes back to the keeper, Callum Irving, as Fury will build it up from the back and see if they can get one last opportunity here for a game winner. There's some just a decent amount of stoppage time as Fury work it to the left ball in for Tucker Hume and now the follow up is in and it's Ryan Williams 90th minute goal from Ryan Williams and Ottawa Fury FC have taken the late lead he, they've taken the late lead here in leg one of the Canadian Championship well you've been saying it for so long now AJ you can just feel that something was coming here and a great delivery into the box. Farrago had to come out to challenge. 
And the ball finds its way to a wide open Ryan Williams. And he buries it right down the middle of the goal. And that is a clutch goal for Ottawa Fury FC. Great delivery from Andre Campbell. And just some miscommunication there between Diakite and Farrago who had come out to challenge. And Ryan Williams made no mistake. Fury FC, it's both ensuring that they don't give up a late equalizer in that crucial away goal. Three minutes of stoppage time, a minimum of three minutes to be played here at TD Place. They would gladly take a 1 0 advantage to Edmonton for leg two on Wednesday. Sergio, excuse me, Sergio Menicio getting kitted up on the Ottawa bench. Expect him to be Paul Dalglish's third and final sub. As they try and wear down the three minutes of stoppage time here. Well, if you're Ottawa, I don't think you take your foot off the gas yet knowing that there's 90 minutes to be played in Edmonton. It's set forward to Tucker Hume. It's a goal for an Ottawa throw. And Sergio Menicio will come on for Ottawa Fury FC, the third and final substitute for Fury. He'll be coming off in place of the man who has Fury FC in front, Ryan Williams, scoring for his second straight game. You can expect him to drop back into the midfield as opposed to the more forward position that Ryan Williams was playing. by Andre Campbell but just couldn't maintain possession as FC Edmonton worked this wide left short of the halfway line it's left there by Sensura now launch forward and Fury come back through Tucker Hume and Hume's just going to keep on going out of the right side Sergio Manicio. out for an FC Edmonton throw with the seconds left in stoppage time. Sent forward into the Ottawa Fury penalty area. Long shot is blocked. And it comes out again for an FC Edmonton throw. Nick Ledgerwood will plow this forward. Headed away. As it comes past the byline and this will be a goal kick for Ottawa Fury. And it looks like 1-0 will be the scoreline heading into leg two next Wednesday night in Edmonton. Should this result hold, it will be the 12th consecutive game that FC Edmonton have yet to claim a win away from home. Their last road win came August 20th, 2016, a 1-0 win over the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And there is the final whistle as Ottawa Fury FC have taken a 1-0 advantage to Edmonton. It's a late goal from Ryan Williams that decides this one but still everything to be played for next Wednesday at Clark Field well AJ I think you look over the course of 90 minutes and Paul Dalglish is going to be pleased with the performance from his side so many set piece opportunities and you certainly thought that that was going to be how the Ottawa goal was going to come at the rate it was going 
it took right until almost the full 90 for Ryan Williams to have a loose ball come across and net the match winner. Well, our man of the match this evening, and it's a close battle between keeper and scorer. As good as that save was, from, we'll, we'll give the uh, highlight of the night to Callum Irving for that brilliant stop on Alan Zebi, and not to mention the one he had late in the first half. That one off of Shields. But our man of the match this evening is going to be Ryan Williams. You've got to give it to the guy who created lots of opportunity for your side all evening long here at TD Place and ultimately the guy who scored you the clutch goal to give you the win in the first leg. And, you know, I think it is fair that it's given the highlight of the night, as you said, AJ, to Callum Irving. And, it's so clutch because we, we said in the beginning of the broadcast tonight that not conceding would be so vital for Ottawa's success in this home and home series with FC Edmonton. And, you know, you asked, would you be pleased with nil-nil heading back to Edmonton? And I think the answer was absolutely, but immensely more pleased carrying that one nil aggregate lead through the first leg into Alberta next Wednesday night, a week from tonight. Let's have a look at some final uh, match stats from this one, uh, Graham. Total shots uh, on the night, 15 to eight, favoring Fury FC, but it was the shots on target uh, that kind of told the story on both sides. Ottawa was just the one that found the target, and that was also the one that found the back of the net for FC Edmonton four, and it was Callum Irving coming up clutch. On well, definitely three of those four shots, including that miraculous save on Alan Zebi. Possession favoring FC Edmonton, 